Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in Kerbal Space Program, approaching the moon pretty rapidly. And uh, as you can see, I'm using my good old Sonder ship. And what we are doing today is we're landing on the moon, and then we're making it back to Earth, well, Kerbin, with just this part. No actual engines. There we go, we're coming back to that just with this top part, just with RCS systems. So, let's get this started. We are, uh, as you can see, we're descending pretty rapidly, but, you know, if you've seen my past videos about the Sonder ship, it slows down quite fast. Why is that there? Um, so, I don't have to worry about those speeds. But, yeah, we're just going to get lined up for the landing and touch down. But, in other news, uh, SpaceX, all, again, is also pushing back their uh, time of launch back some more. If you don't know who SpaceX is, they're a commercial space entity who are uh, trying to win a big bid with NASA to uh, supply all the, uh, the supply the rockets and the capsules to getting for getting to the International Space Station so that is pretty cool but the problem is is they want to get a perfect flight because this is a certification flight to the ISS so they want everything to go perfectly because if anything goes wrong they're basically losing their contract which means they don't get any money which means that'd be kind of lame but yeah that's being pushed back sadly but we want to make sure that they can do everything correctly to their fullest extent I'm over controlling this But, I'm also here to ask you guys another thing. What do you guys want to see with me playing Kerbal Space Program? Because yes, I can comment, uh, I, I, I can do commentary about the landing and all that stuff, but I also want to talk about other things, since it's space-based things. Do you want me to talk about the news at NASA? Because I, uh, cause I have contacts in there that we can get uh, information from, or, or, or do you want to? talk about other video games or what do you want to talk about I want to hear what you guys want to see comments below now do it now or else I'll probably end up crashing this rocket probably not but comments below why do I keep bouncing up and down don't want to do that uh, that's good bam that's a hard landing, but who cares? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take off. And then on the NF ball, you see north, and then that's 90 degree line, and that's the 270. We're going to go 270 because that's what I found to be the um, easiest way to get back home. It, it, it makes it so you lose the most speed when taking off. Uh, like, you lose the most uh, orbital speed when you're um, going around uh, curve it when you transition from the uh, mooner. Um, uh, uh, sphere of influence to the Kerbin sphere of influence. So, are you guys ready for this? Okay, launching in three, two, one. Disconnect. Okay, here we go. All RCS powered so you don't get sounds of engines. It's all quiet. But the reason why I'm doing this is because Try Dying to Live has been wanting to do this. He hasn't been able to, so I'm showing him how I did it. Now, to get to the moon, I used my enormously massive rocket of doom that I used in the uh, in the, the last Kerbal Space Program episode. You know, where I showed off my Sonder ship and how to properly take off of the surface of the the moon. Try dying to live, yet yeah, proper way of doing it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh. Uh, so I used that monster rocket to get here, and then I uh, just landed with the Sonder ship, 
uh, left the cylinder ship behind, and now we're just powered under this stack of RCS systems. There's four times eight RCSs, and then there's four. Uh, there's there's is that three? Yeah, that, yeah that's three uh, RCS tanks. So we hit 800 meters per second. So that means we're going to achieve escape velocity of the moon. So let it auto say here. I have a ton of things in this world. So auto save takes a while. As you saw there. And this was off center because I couldn't get another one in between there. But it doesn't really affect it that much because all you're doing is you're only going forward and backward. You're kind of having to do this because I did I I I did not want to add any SAS because that adds a lot of weight, which means you have to have more more power, which means you need to have more fuel to get where you want to go. This is the one place where uh, uh, I'm okay with uh, uh, being a lot more hands-on with something. So. Yeah, so we'll have it spinning and twirling like that, and we'll go into the map. Oh my gosh, I can't believe my phone went out. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that, I needed to get the phone, but here we go. See why I went to 270? It launches you, so the moon is going this direction. And so it launches you backwards because you kind of rotate around as you go faster because of the moon, and we're pretty low. So, if you see that, see the whole, this whole thing starts rotating around, so we lose even less and less. And see right there, see <laughs> now it's very pequeño, muy small. I see this that's how many things that's how many things I have already. I've launched a lot of deep space. Because if you look I have that which is just one of my first RCS and returns but I decided to uh, slingshot away from the moon and I achieved escape velocity. Uh, and then this is one of my deep space one that I didn't fully successfully launched because I went too high in the initial um, launch and then I have this way out there look how far out it is it's at 115 billion meters so that's 115 million kilometers that's far but here we go we'll, we'll zoom back in we're at the apoapsis, so we're going to do our final burn at the apoapsis to bring our paraapsis down. But So here we go. Let's line it up right there. RCS on. And see, right there, it, it shrinks like crazy. So the, the, the hardest part about the whole thing is creating a uh, system that takes off from the moon quickly and fast enough to be able to... Uh, achieve orbital velocity so let's I like bringing them in soft landings because you, you, you know if you're if you're hitting the atmosphere going 300 meters per second that's three kilometers per second if you're hitting the the solid atmosphere like that yeah that's gonna hurt and gonna cause a lot of pressure on the body even though they're Kerbals, and so they're probably squishy. Um, <laughs> and so, I'm so confident that this will work, that I'm going to do that. <gasps> Am I crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Hopefully I had the uh, perhaps is low enough that we don't get slingshotted back out again. Because you can actually skip off the atmosphere. Well, skip as in, you slow down a little bit, but it doesn't bring in the apoapsis enough to be able, uh, so it actually goes out. And then it has to go back in to bring it back in all the way. But let oh, auto save. Maybe. Aha! Auto save! Aha! Well, that's quite a slanted orbit. 
But yeah, we have, looks like we're going to be landing at night. But here we go, let's have the approach. We let's go in here. We're falling back to the earth. Whoa. As you see, our altitude is dropping like a stone. See, we're approaching 3,200 meters per second. That's why I'm having it hit the um, atmosphere at a very shallow angle. Because I don't want them to be incinerated. Because if you didn't know, you get incinerated if you uh, get the, the heat shield. If you're hitting it at too steep of an angle, it uh, causes a lot of friction, which can lead to to you burning up. Just slight problem. This is actually not implemented in the game. I like to pretend that it is. Um, I can't wait until they have fire coming out of the uh, off of this when you're going into re-entry. That'll be cool. Um, but like, for a too steep of an angle, it causes way too many Gs. For example, one of the Soyuz flights back to Earth, they came in at too steep of an angle. If you don't know what the Soyuz is, it's the Russian space capsule. It's what they use to launch into space. Um, it's during the era of our um, space shuttles. So, um, uh, and it, one of them came back at too steep of an angle. Actually, one of our American astronauts were there. And um, they were under 8 Gs for 5 minutes. Could you imagine that? 8 G's. That is an insanely high G force. That that they uh, and then when they hit it, when they hit the ground they experienced about a 20 G shock. Um uh now your body it can sustain up to 40 Here, let's deploy the parachute. So when it gets low enough, it's because let's see right there. Yeah, our apoapsis. There we go. Uh, when because uh, your body can sustain up to 45 G's for a split second. Any more than that, your body will rip itself apart. Um, but uh, which is generally, just generally speaking here, it's generally bad for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, so. At the end of it, they had to work so hard to breathe. You, uh, they, all the astronauts and cosmonauts actually learn how to breathe under high G force, and it's this huffing. It's basically huffing and puffing, like <laughs> small, little, shallow breaths, just to get enough oxygen into your system that you can breathe. That's what they have to do. So um, they had to do this for five minutes under this constant G force. I couldn't. I can't believe how horrible that would have felt, it's just, ugh. and there we go, see, the max G, it's, it's, it's small, 3 G's right there, with the parachute out, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah, they, they hit down, and then, since they were too steep on re-entry, they are way off, and so, after that, uh, because of that, um, they still had parts of their space capsule that was really, really hot, because they're at steep angle, so, the Soyuz capsule lands in Russia, and they try to land. And it lands inland because they didn't have. They don't have that powerful of a navy. We we have a powerful navy, so we can just go out, pick them up, and bring them back. But um, as you can hear, the sound is going. Uh, but uh, Russia doesn't have uh, the uh, resources that America has. Um, but when they hit down, their capsule started a fire. It, now, now they're they're in this uh, plains, plains like grassy plains. And so they started a fire and they had been on the ISS for a while. So and the Soyuz is a small, small spacecraft. So they're sitting there trying to get out. They couldn't get out. It's because they're they were so weak and the capsule's so small. The uh, American astronaut girl is a, is, a, is a woman. Um, she tried to get out of her seat. She got out of her seat and fell all the way to the bottom and face down into the bottom of the space capsule. The capsule was actually on its side. Um, and uh, so the normal rescue team was way, 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 way out. So some local villagers actually came 
and saved them. They actually, they, they came and got them out of the, uh, space capsule. <laughs> and, and, and they, 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 they weren't even, uh, uh, they didn't even have enough strength to even stand up. They were, like, sitting there uh, in, face down in the ground because they were just completely out of strength from being in space for so long and going through that much G's on re-entry. Takes a lot out of you. But, yeah, that's just the funny story. So if you guys like these funny stories, comment below, tell me that you like them. Because I will find more to tell you. I I like I love NASA and space things like that. Um, if uh, if you guys like this and you want more Kerbal Space Program, comment below. And tell me what you what you'd like. I'll I'll take a look look at um, what uh, what I can do. Um, and if you guys want tutorials tell me especially if you want tutorials on a specific thing I can uh, show you what to do uh, how to do it and splash down hoorah we made it and auto save so everything's frozen but um <laughs> uh, if you guys uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, if if you guys like the video, give it a like. If you loved it, give it a favorite. And if you want to see more from my channel, subscribe. Let's see what they went through. And flight. Loading, loading, loading. See, max 3.3 Gs. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.